Hello everybody, it's time for another exciting episode of Ray's Devlog. So as you might have seen, we've had two weeks since the last update video, which means we have had a lot of time to work on Ray's. I thought today I'd show you mostly the backend systems portion of what we've done, as well as a little insider into the animation system that we've built, which most of what I've been doing this week has been focused around. So I'm going to show you a little bit how that works. But let's dive right into it. First of all, inventory system. If you press either I on the keyboard or back on the Xbox 360 controller, you will be access this screen where you can choose your three active weapons. There are three slots, two are melee weapons and one is a ranged weapon, where the two melee weapons can be used interchangeably, so you can select any two. As of now, we have the chain whip and the handgun since before, and two new weapons. There's the lightning dagger, which teleports you forward, it's like, sort of like a blink attack, and the lightning sword, or face sword, which uh, is a heavy hitting sword that faces in and out of existence, sort of like a nano nano robot structure that builds up a sword for you that you can temporarily at attack with. There's also a new targeting system that works similarly to Devil May Cry or the, uh, the 3D Zelda games where you press a left button on the controller or A on the keyboard to target the nearest enemy. You will then always be facing that enemy so that you won't have to dodge around them and make sure that you're facing the right direction before you attack so it makes, it a makes combat a little bit uh, easier. You can also cycle which enemy you're currently targeting with the uh, with the left thumbstick on the joystick or numpad 1 and 3 on keyboard. That is completely rebindable, it's just that we don't have enough keys to work with anymore now that we're getting so many functions, so that we had to resort to using the numpad instead of anything, anything else. Additionally, we've done a lot of bug fixes and minor changes, and minor systems updates that's taken up most of my time at least, whereas Martin has mostly worked on contents. Now, this, this leads me nicely into the next thing I want to talk about, which is systems development. Now, I do realize that even after 18 weeks, we're still very much into the systems development phase of the project. This is the early phase where we do all the groundwork to make the game development and content development phases later as easy as possible. And we do this by making systems that are easy to add new data to and that we can easily tweak so that we can easily add new enemies or new attacks with minimum coding effort. All we should be able to do is just paint the sprites and animate them and then define the properties of every enemy and their attack patterns and such without actually coding. As well as making sure that everything works the way we want it to do before before the content production starts. So, so then, yep, there's no bugs and all the systems are tweaked to do to be to be able to do what we what we want them to do but still having enough freedom through the through the design interface that we've made. So for example, this is what I talked about in the beginning of the video. Our animation system, uh, this is what it looked like before. It was a mess. It, we're using Mechanim, Unity's own built-in animation state tree. Uh, and having everything on a single layer meant that you would have to define every animation as a state and then all the possible transitions to and from that state. What I've done in the last week is go over that and uh, change the player's animation state, uh, state tree into a state tree with several layers. So the way it works here is that movement is on the base layer and then uh, all, the, all the weapons are on each a separate layer. So for every weapon it's, it's, uh, its corresponding attacks are at the associated layer and they're set up in a, in a, in a structure that resembles the uh, the eventual combo mechanic that we want for that weapon. So for instance, the chain whip has three light attacks in succession, and then after that we can add more special attacks uh, on top of that if we want to, like uh, light attack, light attack, and then pressing up while doing the light attack could lead to something different other than the third standard light attack that we're just going to play if you pl press the light attack three times. It could lead into an aerial attack or or a stun attack or something, just special moves for every weapon. So here you see very clearly that in the new system, depending on which two melee weapons you choose and also which range weapon you choose to some extent, 
you can make very unique builds to suit your playstyle. If you want a sneaky backstab build or or a tank build or or anything in between, we hope to be able to capture that so that for each player there is a set of weapons that suits them the the most and that they can play around with the system to find that. We're approaching the end of our next uh, the next release, which is going to be in two or three weeks by the end of July, and by then we will have added more sounds. Uh, another little surprise enemy that I'm maybe going to show off in the next video. Uh, at least one new attack move for every enemy. And systems for shops, quests, dialogues and upgrades and actu actually obtaining, obtaining the uh, weapons that you're supposed to be ob obtainable. Hopefully we're going to have done a lot of that by next week. And uh, as per always, I will try my best to stick to the upload schedule and post a new video this weekend. I know I have been bad, excuse me for this. It's a combination of procrastination and uh, and a really enjoyable summer break. But also I have to realize that after I've gotten my routine, everyday routines down, this is the project that I, I would like to dedicate most of my time into. I just need to realize that myself first. It is a passion, it is a passion project of mine and, and it's really fun to be here, to be able to say that you actually started your own game development studio. So yeah. That in itself should be motivation enough for me to continue. I'm pretty sure that by next week I would also have gotten far enough to have enough content to show you that these videos become interesting. If you have anything specific that you're wondering about, how we carry out, how the work distribution is between me and Martin, or, or any other game aspect of the game development that I haven't covered in this video, then go ahead and let me know, and I will surely make another video of it. That is everything for today. Alexander tuning out to infinity and beyond. See you next week. Bye.